Hello everyone. It's good to be with you. Uh, we haven't done a video here in a while, uh, so I'm glad to be back after finals are over and we're trying to get to the end of the school year, so things might loosen up a little bit. Uh, but it's good to be with you. Like I said, uh, excuse my voice. It's a little raspy. I, I think it has to do with all these March winds. You know, I'll be glad when April, May finally get here because it sure has been like March. Uh, but we're, uh, again, just moving forward and glad you're here today and hope you um, uh, hear some exciting things that are going on here at RSUMC. Now, before we do that, I want to share a little bit of uh, some scripture. Because again, those of you who are sticking with this reading plan, I know at times it can be difficult. At times it can be a challenge to get up every day and uh, spend that time in the Word, but it definitely is fruitful. I'll just give you an example. And I'll be honest, it's real transparent. I get up the other morning and I'm looking at what I have to read today. And it's like from four different books of the Bible. There's First Samuel and there's uh, second, First Chronicles and then two different Psalms and then Acts. And I'm going, gosh, it's a lot of reading to do today. And then I open to Psalm 106. And I think, oh gosh, that's 48 verses, two whole pages of the Bible. I don't want to have to read that today, but I did. And as I did, God really spoke to me from its from the pages, from what he was saying in Psalm 106. And it's really kind of a history of Israel and their faithfulness and unfaithfulness to God and how God has honored his covenant with his people. And at one point, it, it's kind of going through the history of, like I said, his relationship to the, the Hebrews. And it says in verse 19, at Horeb, this is when Moses is up on the mountain receiving the Ten Commandments. It says, at Horeb, they made a calf and worshiped an idol cast from metal. They exchanged their glory, meaning the glory of God. They exchanged their glory for an image of a bull. And then it goes, which eats grass. I mean, think about that. They were worshiping an idol, a golden calf, a golden bull, and basically, what do they do? They hang out in the field all day eating grass. They don't provide. They don't protect. They don't give you a purpose for living. They just basically eat grass. You know, and I just thought, well, as I read that, I started laughing at first. Just that idea they exchanged the glory of God for the image of a bull, which eats grass. And I just thought that was funny until I started reflecting on that and thinking of the many times in my life when I've exchanged the glory of God for some cheap imitation, some cheap imitation that doesn't really do anything. And so I went ahead and uh, confessed right there to God how much I needed him and how much I wanted to put my life in his hands. And it goes on and talks about all their unfaithfulness, idol worship, just disobedience, the things they did throughout their history and how God was going to destroy them because of the covenant, how Moses intervened on their behalf and interceded for them. And then at, at, toward the end of this psalm, this is such a powerful word of promise. It says, but he took note, meaning God, he took note of their distress when he heard their cry. For their sake, he remembered his covenant and out of his great love, he relented. That means God changed his mind. Because he heard their cries and his love won over. He says he caused them to be pitied by all who held them captive. I mean, God's love, we just can't hardly get our minds around it or wrap our minds around it. But boy, we sure need to cry out to him today in this world. So anyway, that uh, was from my reading of one day, Psalm 106. Let me just tell you about a couple of things coming up that you want to circle on your calendar. First of all, Sunday morning. And of course, with the new CDC uh, guidelines, where if you've been vaccinated, you don't need a mask, you don't need to social distance, uh, we're going to be back. We've got uh, some more chairs we've put out, so we're expecting a, a good turnout this Sunday. And we're going to celebrate a baptism. London Davidson is going to be baptized this Sunday. Man, it's been a while since we've been in those waters. And I'm so excited. And she has professed her faith in Christ and uh, is excited about this Sunday. And so... Uh, um, come on out and worship with us and celebrate this baptism. We'll still be live stream for those who are in groups or at home and you want to continue to worship like that. That's perfectly fine. 
But uh, we will be celebrating London's baptism this Sunday. We're excited about that. And then let me just tell you about uh, May the 23rd. That's considered, it's called Pentecost Sunday. It literally is the birthday of the church. Of course, the day of Pentecost is when the Holy Spirit fell. And those, uh, those disciples gathered in Jerusalem in prayer. Peter preaches the first sermon and 3,000 are baptized. And basically the church is born. That's their birthday. And uh, for some reason, we don't really pay a lot of attention to that day, but I really think it's important. It's also interesting how it hasn't become a holiday like Christmas and Easter. You know, we don't have Pentecost Day or anything like that, but it's a very important day. And so that day, we're going to do something different. We're going to take the church outside the walls. And what we're going to do first at two o'clock, we'd like you to come and participate in a prayer walk. We're just going to go door to door throughout the city, throughout our community, and knock on doors and say, hey, we're here from Russell Springs Methodist Church. We're just here to pray for you. Is there anything in you, your family are dealing with that we can offer up in prayer? I've done this, and I know many of you have too, many times, and it's, it's just such a blessing and such an opportunity to really connect with people in the community. So we're going to do this prayer walk about 2, 2.30. So be here at 2. And then after the prayer walk, um, we'll come back and kind of share what our experiences were like. But then that evening, we're going to have a cookout. We're going to be outside. We're praying for great weather. We're going to have a cookout uh, at about 5 o'clock is when we'll eat. And then at 6 o'clock, we're going to do an outdoor worship uh, here in the parking lot. Or, you know, we haven't really set up all the details of that yet. Uh, but that's... May the 23rd. So circle your calendar and block off that time and come out that day and worship with us and be with us. And let's go pray for people. And then let's come back together and celebrate what God's doing. So again, raspy voice and all, it's good to be with you. And I hope to be with you again this Sunday as we worship the Lord together. Amen. Amen.